Many people believe that bear spray is like having a magical force field of safety. It's a superhero sidekick that keeps you protected from potential wild animal encounters. With bear spray by their side, people venture fearlessly into the territory of predators. However, bear spray doesn't always work, and sometimes it only makes the animals more angry. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. In today's episode, we take a look at three times bear spray didn't work and the terrifying attacks that happened next. Welcome to Final Affliction. This story just goes to show that animal attacks can happen to even the most experienced and cautious hikers and campers. The tragedy occurred in September 2023 and shook the residents of the province of Alberta. Doug Inglis, aged 62, and Jenny Gussi, also 62, had been together since university. They lived in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. They were inseparable, both working as technicians in the same scientific lab. They had a deep love for the great outdoors and were certainly no stranger to the challenges that it can sometimes present. They each carried with them vital survival kits and emergency equipment every time they ventured into the wilderness. They traveled out to Banff National Park twice a year, usually once in the spring and once in the fall. But the National Park is home to some of the deadliest predators in Canada, grizzly bears. There are thought to be 65 individuals that call Banff home, with a further 20 to 40 black bears too. A family member said that Doug and Jenny were very careful people when they were on their adventures in the wilderness, whether it be hiking, camping, canoeing, or whitewater rafting. They knew bear protocol, and they followed it to a T. But sometimes, with even the best precautions in place, people can find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. The pair had with them their sidekick and hiking companion, their dog. The three of them stuck to signposted routes and always adhered to any warnings displayed throughout the park. But on that fateful trip in late September 2023, there were no warnings. No bears had been sighted in that area, and there had been no reports of them from visitors. They were on day five of a week-long visit to the park, something they looked forward to every year. They were making their way along Red Deer River Valley, west of Yahatinda Ranch. This valley is an untouched landscape within the park. It is inaccessible to most hikers, with no roads leading in or out of it. Meadows give way to mature spruce forests, and towering above the valley floor are craggy mountaintops and glacial cirques. The area is home to some fascinating wildlife, including elk, moose, wolves, grizzly bears, and cougars. The landscape is simply stunning, but its remoteness isn't for the faint of heart, and it has its dangers. After the fifth day's hiking, the couple found a spot to camp for the night. They hadn't made it to the planned camping spot, but wanted to set up before it got dark. They knew bears posed a real threat and didn't want to run into one as the sun set. It was a sensible decision. They had time to set up their tent and cook dinner before night fell. As the three of them settled around the campfire, Doug sent a notification message using their Garmin in reach to his uncle, Colin Inglis. The message said they hadn't made the planned campsite, but were setting up camp now. The message pinged through at 5 p.m. It was the reassurance their family needed, and it was yet another safety precaution the cautious couple took whilst hiking in the backcountry. They checked in with family twice every day, but what the couple didn't know was that there was a grizzly bear on the prowl that evening. As the weather begins to get colder, bears enter a hyperphagic state in which they gorge themselves on as much food as possible before the winter. It's essential for them to pack in the calories and pack on the pounds. They need to make it through the long, cold, dark winter months all the way through to springtime. Something alerted the bear to their presence. Perhaps it was their scent, the smell of their dinner, or the clinking of pots and pans as they cleared away their dinner. Whatever happened, their bear came for them. The couple, being experienced campers and bear-wise, had hung up their food in a nearby tree so as not to attract bears into their tent. 
They also kept with them a can of bear spray each. After dinner, Doug and Jenny crawled into their tent with their dog. As night fell and darkness engulfed Banff National Park, the two of them sat up reading on their e-readers, something they did every night before settling down. But outside, a grizzly bear was approaching the tent. They could hear it sniffing just the other side of the canvas. They stayed still and as quiet as possible, hardly daring to breathe. Then terrifyingly, it slashed through the canvas and tried to grab the couple inside. The dog growled and barked, and Doug and Jenny tried to scare it away, yelling at it. Doug reached for his bear spray and emptied the canister at the bear, but in a fury, the bear fought back. Nobody knows exactly what happened during those horrifying moments, but one of them sent an SOS message from the Garmin, which Doug's uncle received. It said, bear attack, bad. So last Monday, they started out. And Monday night, like every other time, I would, at the end of the day, I would get an in-reach message saying, we're at our destination, everything's okay. Um, on Friday night, same thing. Uh, at uh, 4.52, I got a message saying, we're delayed, but everything's okay. And uh, that message would mean that they were in a camp, their camp was set up, they were probably making dinner, and they were messaging myself and Jenny's mom with that message to say that they, things were good. Um, 8.15, the phone rings, I got a phone call from Garmin, uh, who InReach belongs to, and the message was, we've had an SOS message, and the SOS, not only was the SOS activated, which was a, is a button, but there was a message input into the inReach that said, bear attack bad. So at that point, we, we knew something was happening that was very bad, that they were in trouble. The distress message also immediately alerted a wildlife human attack response team. This emergency GPS device was yet another piece of equipment the well-prepared couple always carried with them. It was potentially a life-saving device. The response team were deployed immediately. The use of a chopper was out of the question due to poor weather and poor visibility. This was a serious blow. The rescue team knew that after a bear attack, every second counts, and now they were forced to make the journey on foot. They were specially trained individuals with mountaineering and medical training, specifically to attend to animal attack victims. Marching through the Canadian wilderness, they didn't know what they were going to find at the location. Nobody knew if the victims were dead or alive. They had to traverse the steep rocky terrain in the dead of night, their flashlights illuminating the way. They knew they were walking into danger. They knew that a bear was out there, and yet, they had to keep going to try and reach the couple in desperate need. At one o'clock in the morning, five hours after they received the distress signal, the rescuers arrived at the couple's camp. The scene they arrived at was distressing. They could see signs of a struggle and, tragically, they could see three dead bodies, those of Doug and Jenny and that of their dog. The grizzly bear had rampaged through the camp, destroying everyone in it. The three of them lay on the ground outside the tent. As they scouted around the campsite, they tried to piece together what had happened. The food was still hung up in the trees, and lying on the ground were two cans of bear spray. They were empty. The tent was flattened and shredded. The two e-readers were inside with their screens smashed. There were signs of a struggle that didn't occur in just one place. There was evidence that the couple tried to scare the bear away but none of their preparation and none of their scare tactics worked. But the rescue team wasn't alone. They were being watched by the same grizzly. It stood just yards away, hidden by the trees. As they investigated the scene, they suddenly heard a crashing through the undergrowth. Turning their heads and spinning their flashlights around, they saw a grizzly bear emerging from the trees illuminated by their flashlight beams. It ran into the clearing. It wasn't going to stop. This wasn't a mock charge. They only had one option. Pulling the trigger on a rifle, one of the rescue team shot the bear. It fell to the ground just feet from where they stood. 
Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrived at the scene at 5 o'clock that morning. They carefully carried the victims away and sent the bear off for a necropsy. The investigation into the bear revealed that she was a 25-year-old female. She wasn't lactating at the time and wasn't tagged or known to the park rangers as a nuisance bear. She was in fairly good condition but with poor teeth and less than normal body fat for that time of year. Her behavior had been very aggressive. If a bear has attacked a person due to defense from being startled, then it usually leaves the area afterwards. But this bear remained nearby. Could this bear have been hunting the two hikers? Was this a predatory attack? Attacks by bears in Canada are rare, and predatory attacks exceedingly rare. With just 65 grizzlies in the park, the last known fatal attack occurred in 1973 when a heavily sedated bear charged at a biologist as it was being relocated and released. Of course, this tragedy has hit Doug and Jenny's family and friends hard. It is difficult to comprehend exactly what has happened and the sequence of events that led up to their deaths. Those who knew the couple are in a state of shock, and for it to have happened to such an experienced couple means that it can happen to anyone. Even after deploying two cans of bear spray onto the bear, it wasn't enough to stop the couple's terrifying final affliction. The U.S. state of Montana is one of those places in the world that sparks adventure. The landlocked terrain is situated in the Northern Rockies and Plains region in the Northwestern United States. The fourth largest U.S. state boasts a whopping 147,000 square miles of area, peppered with brilliant mountain ranges in the western third of the state. The pristine wilderness and spectacular scenery are Mother Nature's way of showing off its wonderful creation. Animals including white-tailed deer, wolverines, elk, and even predators like black bears, coyotes, and wolves all coexist in the dazzling American landscape. Among them, however, is one of the world's most feared predators, the grizzly bear. Even the most experienced mountaineers, hikers, and adventurers are wary of these brown beasts of destruction. Sharing the land with these intelligent, powerful creatures should be carefully considered upon visiting Montana. Although grizzly bears seldom attack, when they do, it's a terrifying exhibit. On August 26, 2005, father and daughter Johan and Jenna Otter were hiking in Montana's Glacier National Park. Unfortunately, they happened to be at the wrong place and time as they felt the wrath and power of a mother grizzly bear. It was August 18, 2005, a week before Johan and Jenna's trip to Montana. With September just around the corner, Jenna's time was limited as she was headed to the University of California, Irvine as a freshman. The two decided to go on a memorable trip to celebrate Jenna's new chapter in life. They chose to hike at Glacier National Park. While Jenna was a young athletic dancer, Johan was a runner who often participated in marathons. Consequently, a hike at a beautiful location seemed the perfect bonding option. August 25th. The day of the trip arrived. Johan woke up early, excited to head to the trail before anyone else. After all, yesterday was a rainy disappointment. However, today was different as the sun rays beamed through the clouds, coloring yellow the misty Montana wilderness. The two headed up the trail at around 7.30 a.m., ready for the ambitious hike ahead. Unbeknownst to them, this trip would test them in ways they could not have ever predicted. A thick carpet of thimbleberries sprinkled the bushes along the path. Other wildflowers like bear grass and lilies grew underneath the spruce and pine. Walking along Lake Josephine, the two managed to cover a great distance. Johan and Jenna were already above the tree line within 40 minutes of their hike. They gazed at the beautiful surrounding peaks lightly covered in snow. The two were in awe at the park's grandiosity. Continuing their journey, the hikers talked loudly to not surprise any bears that might be hiding in the bushes. They were well aware of the dangers and practiced precautionary measures diligently as they'd been taught to do. Approaching the southern flank of Mount Grinnell, the two fell silent as they stared at the snow-covered peaks glistening under the Montana morning. Johan felt grateful. Jenna still wanted to participate in what he called a senior trip. The day could not have gone more perfectly. This would be an unforgettable day indeed, however, not in the way that they imagined. 
Although she felt safe knowing her father was with her, Jenna had an underlying feeling of nervousness. This was born from the knowledge that early hours were the time for feeding for various animals. Along the way, Johan took out his video camera and decided to record the park's natural beauty. The pine trees in the distance looked like strokes of paint painstakingly done by a masterful artist, ensuring every detail was unique. Dad, let's go, we've got a long way to go, Jenna urged her father, who was standing there still awestruck behind his camera. To her, Johan looked like an easy target, but Jenna quickly dispersed the thoughts. Johan understood this and quickly removed himself from the trance. Being the seasoned marathoner he was, Johan caught up to her in no time at all. Bear attacks in the park were extremely rare, considering the millions of visitors flocking annually. During these hikes, experts recommend carrying a can of bear spray, a non-lethal defense against potential predators. And this was precisely what Johan and Jenna did. However, they made one crucial mistake. The can was placed inside Johan's backpack. This was common practice though, as many people think attacks wouldn't really happen to them, until it does. The two climbed higher into the trail. If anything should happen to them, Johan and Jenna were to deal with the problem on their own. They continued to talk, unwittingly walking into territory that would soon change their lives. As they headed farther up, the clouds cleared, revealing the spectacular view of the mountains and lakes. This prompted Johan to take his camera again, and the two fell silent once more. Walking up the trail ahead of her father, Jenna reached a bend that hid whatever was behind it, and there it was, a large brown silhouette pacing in front of her. Before she could fully comprehend what she was seeing, Jenna's heart had already sunk to her stomach. The large grizzly bear mother walked towards her, followed by two yearling cubs. It was the worst possible scenario. The bear's most excellent danger detection tool is its nose. However, the wind was blowing down the mountain at the time. This prevented the animal from detecting the approaching father and daughter. A surprised bear, especially a mother grizzly, is highly aggressive and immensely dangerous. It was a perfect concoction of bad timing and bad luck. Turning away from the massive beast, Jenna began to run out of panic. She yelled to her father, warning him about the bear. Jenna was sure she was going to die. Turning his head towards his daughter's yelling, Johan saw the massive grizzly bear coming up behind her. He knew they didn't stand a chance. However, a primal instinct swelled inside his chest, overtaking the fear and panic. Without hesitation and without thinking, Johan stepped across Jenna, blocking the charging creature with his body. The bear went into attack mode, biting Johan's thigh with its frightening jaws laced with three-inch canines. Seeing the horror unfold from only a few feet away, Jenna could do nothing but scream. Next to the polar bear, a grizzly bear's bite sits at an immense force of 1,160 psi, enough to crush a bowling ball without the creature even flinching. The grizzly locked onto Johan's thigh, clamping on the bone like a jackhammer. Johan's gravely desperate screams reflected the searing pain that he felt. It filled the quiet atmosphere of the park. Eventually, the bear readjusted its bite, going in and out of the flesh. Amid the unfolding terror, Johan managed to think clearly. He realized he needed to break loose to survive. Quickly observing the area, Johan noticed the mountain face was on his right, but to his left, a sharp drop. However, behind him, shy of 20 feet, was an alder patch on a slight slope from the cliff. Johan immediately dove into the bushes, landing on his side. His head spun and his teeth clattered upon impact, but he was okay. His right eye was already bleeding, but there was no time to tend to his wounds. Jenna was left with the bear. Down here, Johan yelled at Jenna, instructing her to jump toward him. Jenna saw the can of bear spray and immediately went to pick it up. However, she didn't know how to work the can. Without time to read the instructions, Jenna realized she needed to get away. Without hesitation, she leaped towards the cliff, not knowing where she was landing. Though the possibility of death crossed her mind, it was on her terms better than getting mauled into pieces by an angry apex predator. However, Johan didn't know this and continued to yell at his daughter. The bear cocked its head, looking down at him from the alder patch. It had his scent, and there was no fooling it. Poking its head from the slope, the bear pounced on Johan, covering the 20-foot distance like it was nothing. Johan had never seen something move so solid and so fast. 
Forced into a fetal position, Johan was partially protected by his pack. However, the bear was keen on finishing him to protect her cubs. The creature lifted Johan from the bushes with its mouth, attempting to flip him. It clawed at his back, slashing his clothes and tearing his skin apart. Johan's mind started to race. All he wanted to do was keep the bear away from Jenna. The next thing he knew, he fell 30 feet down, hitting the ground with his face. He was rattled, bruised, and severely injured, but he was alive. When Johan regained composure, he realized he had landed on the same ledge Jenna was on. However, the bear was still after him. Johan accidentally brought the grizzly straight to Jenna. Standing on its hind legs, the bear cocked its head back and forth, letting loose a deafening growl. Seeing the beast, Johan and Jenna scrambled for safety, but there was nowhere to go. The bear dropped to its massive front paws and went in for the kill, charging the defenseless father and daughter. Jenna tried to hide behind a nearby bush, but Johan decided to stay within the creature's sights, putting on a brave face and facing it head on. As mighty and immovable as the bear was, Johan's determination to protect his daughter was just as unstoppable. Johan grabbed the nearest weapon he could find, a sharp rock. However, it quickly crumbled into dust in his hands. The bear's amber-brown eyes stared straight into Johan's fearful face. It was like staring down the barrel of a shotgun. Johan was certain his life was over. The fight was on again. The bear chomped down on Johan's arm, piercing the flesh and locking his jaws onto the bone. Johan fought hard, but he was simply no match for the bear's strength. From a few feet away, Jenna watched in horror. She resisted the temptation of trying to help her father in the scuffle. The bear went for Johan's head, tearing his scalp off and chewing on the bone. He felt his skull cracking and he screamed at the painful horror. Johan knew this might be the end if he didn't do anything. He was at a crossroads, either fall from the cliff and possibly die on his terms or get mauled by the bear, a guaranteed painful death. It was a reasonably easy deduction. Breaking free from the bear's grip, Johan jumped into the void and landed on a ledge 20 feet away from the commotion. Luckily, a small rocky ridge saved him from certain death. He looked up and saw the bear poking its head from the cliff. The steepness between him and the creature saved him from getting attacked again. However, Jenna was still in danger. Sniffing human flesh in the air, the bear scored the area for Jenna. As it approached the bushes where she hid, Jenna felt the bear's panting on her neck. Her stomach churned in fear. Eventually, the bear attacked again. Its massive jaws chomped on her head, ripping her lower jaw open. However, a sense of clarity washed over her. Jenna decided to play dead and stay as still as possible. It worked. The bear left the scene, convinced the threat was neutralized. Terrified the bear might come back if he made a sound, Johan stayed still for two grueling minutes. Eventually, he couldn't remain still. He had to check on Jenna. Bleeding profusely, Johan worked through the pain to prop himself up against the mountain face. There were no sounds from the ledge above. Suddenly, Jenna's voice pierced through the eerie silence. Johan was filled with gratitude. Johan touched his head and could feel only bone. He explored no further, realizing he was severely injured. He reached for his nylon jacket and protected his exposed scalp. Unfortunately, the adrenaline in his body was wearing off and he was in danger of going into shock. Meanwhile, Jenna screamed as loud as she could. Help, she repeated at the top of her lungs. Eventually, other hikers heard her, prompting their rescue two hours later. Johan and Jenna were airlifted to the nearby hospital. Johan's spine and neck were severed in the attack, and his scalp needed a skin graft. He had a punctured eye, a broken nose, and broken ribs. However, his ego was intact. More importantly, he protected Jenna. After nine operations and several months in the hospital, Johan fully recovered. Meanwhile, Jenna also underwent surgery. She began university wrapped in bandages. They say a man's true character shows in the face of certain death. Johan showed he had a heart of gold and guts made of titanium. Although the incident was terrible, it could have been prevented had the two gone over and reviewed their precautionary measures. Certainly, Jenna could have learned how to use the bear spray before heading on to the hike. Additionally, the bear spray canister could have been kept by Johan's side where he could reach it easily. Fortunately, 
the two could reflect on these hard lessons as they were given another chance at life, thankful for each new day after narrowly escaping their final affliction. Grizzly bears are one of nature's most terrifying apex predators. They are the largest of the bear species and are normally found in the northwestern United States and western Canada. The average male grizzly bear can be up to six and a half feet tall. Some grizzlies, however, have been known to reach heights of up to nine feet and weigh as much as 1,000 pounds. Grizzly bears possess long, sharp claws that can be up to four inches long. They also have a very powerful jaw, and their bite force is one of the strongest when it comes to mammals. A grizzly bear's powerful bite can crush a human skull with ease. Its sharp claws can easily puncture human flesh, and its razor-sharp teeth can cut through muscle and bone. In addition to their deadly claws and teeth, Grizzly bears are also known for their volatile tempers, and they can be extremely dangerous, especially when threatened. Despite their size, strength, and short temper, grizzly bears are generally shy and reclusive animals. They will usually avoid contact with humans if possible. However, grizzly bears have been known to occasionally attack humans, especially if they feel threatened or when protecting their young. If you encounter a grizzly bear, it is important to stay calm and avoid making any sudden movements. Try to back away slowly and make yourself as small as possible. Whatever you do, do not run, as this may trigger the bear's predatory instincts to give chase. This is the tragic story of Leah Loken, the story of a strong and fearless woman who had an ill-fated encounter with this ferocious predator. Leah Davis Loken was born on December 16, 1955, in Corona del Mar, California. She enjoyed a childhood spent horseback riding and exploring the outdoors near her home in Laguna Beach. After many years of working as a registered nurse specializing in surgery recovery, Leah moved to California and built a home for herself in 2016. Leah's horrifying tragedy began on July 6, 2021. Leah and her sister had arrived the day before at a small town called Ovando, situated in Montana. They were taking part in an ultra-endurance cycling event that ran from Banff, Canada to New Mexico, a journey of nearly 4,000 kilometers. Leah was a competitive cyclist who took part in mountain bike races. She never let her age weigh her down, and she even won the Mammoth National Champion Enduro Race in July 2015 at 59 years old. In recent years, Montana's population of grizzly bears has expanded into new areas where people now live and visit. Consequently, interactions between grizzly bears and humans have been becoming more frequent in the Northern Rockies. It got so worrying that requests were even submitted to lift the restrictions preventing the killing of dangerous wild animals such as bears, not only in Montana but also in the adjacent states of Wyoming and Idaho. Upon arriving at Ovando, Leah immediately wanted to go camping outdoors. She had even found a perfect spot behind a nearby museum where she could get a phenomenal view of the beautiful night sky. Her sister and friend weren't too keen on her plan, however as they had heard reports of a wild bear roaming nearby. Her sister pleaded with her to ditch the risky idea and stay with her at a hotel, but Leah was too stubborn to heed her sister's warnings. She set up camp next to the Blackfoot River, failing to take into consideration that it bordered a forest where more than 1,000 grizzly bears roamed free. Despite the obvious risks, Leah felt relatively safe as she had not only brought with her a full can of bear spray, but she also met Texas couple Kim and Joe Cole, who shared her love for camping and erected their tent close by to hers, giving her a false sense of security. At 3 a.m., Leah was fast asleep when a hulking shadow appeared before her tent. Leah woke up to the sound of snuffling coming from nearby. She wasn't sure what it was, but it sounded big. The mysterious figure soon approached her tent, shrouding it in darkness with its shadow as it began sniffing where her head was located from the outside. Leah soon realized what that figure was and began screaming for help. Kim and Joe woke up to her screams and began shouting as well. The combined noise made by the trio was luckily enough to scare the bear away, 
as it soon retreated back into the darkness. After making sure the bear was gone, the couple ran to Leah's side to check up on her. She assured them she was fine, and they suggested it may be best for Leah to pack up her things and spend the rest of the night at a hotel for her own safety. Officers said the food conditioned bear showed no fear of humans and repeatedly ripped open coolers and pushed on tents in search of food. Leah told the couple that the bear appeared to be looking around for something and that it even huffed at her head. Apparently, that grizzly was food conditioned. Grizzlies that are food conditioned have learned to seek out human food, which makes them highly dangerous as they no longer fear humans and more often than not associate humans with a potential meal when they see them. This is why it is important not to store any food in your tent when camping in an area where grizzly bears are known to roam, as it will only bring them closer to you. Leah thought that by distancing herself from any sources of food that may attract a bear's attention, she could spend the rest of her night enjoying herself out in the open as she always liked. Leah scoured her tent for any crumbs of food she could find. She put inside a bag everything she thought may attract a grizzly bear's keen sense of smell, including some lentils and dried blueberries, and started almost 30 feet away from her tent. Finally, she thought to herself, she could sleep in peace and not have to worry. What Leah failed to consider, however, was that the containers she used to store her food prior to the previous bear encounter still reeked of blueberries, something which a grizzly bear's phenomenal sense of smell can easily pinpoint. At around 4 a.m., the coals were yet again awoken by horrifying noises. Joe realized that the noise was coming from Leah's tent and that she was being attacked despite not hearing her yell out for help. After exiting their tents, the couple was mortified by what they saw. They quickly pulled out their can of bear spray and rushed toward Leah, unloading on the beast as it pounced up and down on her tent. After it finally had enough, the bear let Leah go and retreated back into the woods. The Coles noticed Leah wasn't moving underneath her now destroyed tent. They ripped the torn tent away from Leah's body and were mortified by what they saw. It was Leah, now sitting motionless and bloodied, her neck and spine contorted in an unsettling fashion as the nearly 500-pound bear had come crashing down on her with all its might, likely causing instantaneous death. After arriving at the scene, investigators found an almost empty can of bear spray that seemed to have been sprayed recently right underneath her tent. Despite allegedly moving all food away, Investigators discovered a small bag of dried blueberries inside her tent, as well as a saddlebag full of food that was likely overlooked by Leah just outside the entrance to her tent. In national news, we have disturbing details this morning about a California woman who was killed by a grizzly bear in Montana. Wildlife officials say that the bear pulled her from her tent in the middle of the night and killed her before fellow campers could use bear spray and get the animal to run away. Investigators theorized that Leah was awoken out of her sleep for the second time that night to the sight of the bear creeping inside her tent. Her sudden movements to grab her bear spray likely caused the bear to swipe at her neck as she squeezed the can of bear spray at the bear. Leah was unable to talk as the deep bleeding gashes now prevented her from screaming for help. Blinded by the bear spray while half inside Leah's tent, the bear began jumping up and down in attempts to free itself. It landed repeatedly on top of her, breaking her bones and killing her. On the 9th of July, three days after Leah's death, a four to seven year old bear was seen breaking into a chicken coop and was shot by officers. DNA analysis from the bear's paws confirmed that it was indeed the one who took Leah's life. The Davis family, who had lost their loved one in this tragic event, were devastated. Although hopefully they can find some semblance of comfort in knowing that the beast responsible won't be hurting anyone ever again. The tragic loss of Leah Davis Loken at the hands of a grizzly bear is a reminder of how important it is to be cautious when venturing into areas where these creatures are known to roam. No matter how well prepared you think you are when stepping into wild territory, sometimes there's just no avoiding an encounter with a wild animal. 
and as the human population continues to grow and expand into areas that were once wild and unexplored, the likelihood of coming face to face with the terrifying creature continues to increase. In the end, Leah's untimely death serves as a powerful warning to not only always be aware of your surroundings and take the necessary precautions, but to also heed nature's warnings and respect the boundaries of its many dangerous creatures. Otherwise, you may end up in death's cold embrace, your life withering away before your eyes as you're handed your final affliction.